Hey, I'm Carb Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carb. We're really excited to reintroduce the Keltec Sub 2000 muzzle brake 9mm and 40. This version now is set up for a crush washer, what you would typically see in the industry across the board. Now, the reason we never did a crush washer to begin with is well, the Keltec Sub 2000 is predominantly plastic, plastic hand guards, and not to mention the barrel mates up into a plastic hinge. So if you were to try to really crank down that muzzle brake and crush it, with a crush washer onto the firearm, you'd likely twist and break that hinge inside, making it a disaster. Nobody wants that. Finally though, we have barrel jaws that we've created for the sub. It'll clamp on the barrel. You have to use a vise, and that's gonna allow you to actually time a muzzle brake and crush it with a crush washer. So previously we had the jam nut set up, which would allow you to easily DIY without a vise, you know, use counter force to get your muzzle brake to locate on the sub. Some guys didn't like, you know, depending on manufacturing dates, you might get a little bit of thread exposure, but it was a safe way to put a muzzle brake on the sub. And that way is still great, effective, and works just fine, but for aesthetic reasons, and then also just simplicity moving forward, we're gonna make all our brakes this way. If we have to, we'll come up with, you know, barrel jaws that'll work for the firearm, specifically like we did here for the sub. So, sub 2000, we got the barrel jaws that'll help you get your muzzle brake timed, by using a vise, so looking forward to that. Pretty straightforward process, easy. You know, the crush washer, you can use it. If you miss your timing, you can back it off and use it again. So it's something that obviously is reusable to a certain degree. You can always buy replacement crush washers, simple. It just makes life a little easier. Not required to run rock set if you're using a crush washer. So some different pros and cons to this setup, but going forward, we're pretty excited about it and it makes things a lot easier for everybody. So there it is. New, same muzzle brake, just new process for installing it. You still got the great compensator effect, still got the great muzzle brake action where it's reducing that blowback, reducing some of that felt recoil, but mostly that compensator effect, helping it shoot flat. Really excited about this. Let's get on our tabletop, show you how we put it on. Parts needed for this build, the Keltec Sub 2000 muzzle brake. This one's a nine mil, but we got them in nine and 40. Now this muzzle brake comes with a crush washer. So that's the reason we're using a vise now and you have to use a vise. Now rock set is optional with the crush washer setup. Now previously on the jam nut, you had to have it. So it's still great insurance to make sure nothing comes loose, doesn't vibrate loose. If you're gonna leave this muzzle brake on and you don't plan on taking them off and putting a suppressor on or you know just mixing things up, then go for the rock set you know, one time, get it done, don't worry about it. It's great extra insurance. But if you're gonna be taking it off all the time, you know, switching it out with different brakes or a suppressor or whatever, then maybe you don't wanna do that because then you're gonna have to clean your threads all the time. And then obviously here, we've got something new for you. So these are your barrel jaws for the Sub 2000. So you can see it'll mate together like this and we'll demo it here in a minute. All right, and you got magnets on both sides so it'll stay right on those jaws on your vise and it'll hold that barrel in place. So because the barrel is actually glued into a plastic hinge, it's very, very important we have something to get a good hold, a good bite on that barrel. And you can see part of the barrel tapers down here. So this feature is a little bit deeper than this feature. So it's to contour and really give you a good bite and grip on that barrel. And this is just soft aluminum. So it's gonna last, it's gonna work, but it's gonna get you that nice tight clamping motion, which is what we want. We do not wanna break our subs putting a muzzle brake on. So the Sub 2000 barrel jaws are a must have just to protect it and not break it while we're putting the muzzle brake on. Tools need for this build, adjustable wrench, 13 16 wrench, masking tape, and you're gonna need a vise when we're putting the muzzle brake on with a crush washer, as opposed to the previous variation with the jam nut. So we will need a vise, and as always, make sure we're on iPro. Before we head over to the vise, let's go ahead and check our firearms, make sure they're clear, check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. All right guys, so here's a quick little side-by-side -side of the way we used to do it. So these are jam nuts holding the actual muzzle brakes in place. You know, typically you just use a crush washer and that's what we're gonna shoot for going forward. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. You know, depending on your production date of your Sub 2000, you could get it perfect like this where the jam nut mates up perfectly and you're able to time your muzzle brake exactly right and there's no little gap there. Or you could have this situation where you have a tiny bit of gap showing a little bit of threads and I know that just drives us all nuts. So purely aesthetic change. We're going to the crush washer away from the jam nut setup. You will need some special tools when you're doing the crush washer. That's the only drawback from this jam nut setup. But the good thing is you're never gonna end up with the potential of having any gap there on the thread. So that was something we wanted to shore up and just kind of make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. But other than that, jam nut works perfect for holding it in place. Great idea, great concept. Even the rock set, extra little insurance to keep it there. Crush washer, 
it'll just be universal, straightforward across the board. So moving forward, as we make more muzzle brakes, that's what we're gonna do. Everything will just be a crush washer. Just kind of make things universal and simple. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this nine millimeter muzzle brake by M-Carbo for the Sub 2000, but it'll work for any nine millimeter with half by 28 threads. In the kit, you'll see standard A311 stress proof carbon steel. This thing is phenomenal. Love this muzzle brake. A lot of the feedback has just been spectacular. You can see with these 45 degree cutouts, does a great job redirecting those gases rearward, helping reduce that felt recoil and the compensator effect up top where it's letting a little gas out the top to help keep that muzzle flat. Does a fantastic job, man, all around. Can't say enough about it. The reviews really do speak for themselves that we've put together over the years. All we've done is change this back face here. So you'll notice the face is solid and it's flat. So the reason we did that is you could run now a crush washer with it as opposed to a jam nut. So you can see the crush washer right here. So it's got one end that's concave like that, kind of a slope inward depression there. And then you got a point right there that's what's gonna locate against the front sight or that nut on the front sight. So that concave portion is gonna lay flat up against the flat portion here on the brake. So that's the new design. So you couldn't use the old style muzzle brake. The old style brake, we had it cut out so that you could thread a jam nut into it with that counter force. The new style going forward, it's gonna require some special tools, obviously the barrel jaws, a vise. So the old style was a lot easier to put together you know, you didn't require any special tools. It was just right on the fly. This, you know, we're going this route so that it's a little more streamlined for everybody. It is gonna require having some tools. If you don't have it, you could take it to a gunsmith or a buddy that's got a vice at least, or you could send it to us and we'll take care of you. But you can see the concave portion is gonna go flat against the brake like that. And then that pointed end is gonna be what's threading into the barrel, particularly that nut on the front sight of the sub. And there's a lot of variations of the sub out there, so you may have the kind without the nut on the front sight, and that'll be fine. Just gotta make sure that front sight is good and tight on the sub. And this brake will work for half by 28 threads all the way around, so whether it's a pistol or Ruger PC carbine, but this video is gonna cover how to install it on the Sub 2000 particularly. All right, good, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. All right, guys, so we're over here at the vise. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on our muzzle brake with the crush washer, not doing the jam nut anymore. So same as usual, we're gonna take that little thread protector off. All right, the newer kind has the knurled, easy thread protector to remove. The old school sub has the one where you had to use the armor's wrench. It was a nut you had to break off to get this little baby off. So that's simple and easy. Next, you wanna look at your threads and make sure they're clean. So if your threads are not clean, you're gonna to have to go ahead and take a wire brush to them, clean them off. If you had rock set or any kind of Loctite or anything like that, it's commonplace to have to clean them up. So just use a little wire brush of some kind, you know, brass tip or just standard wire is gonna be fine. You just wanna get, you know, anything that's obviously gonna impede the thread operation here. We wanna make sure we got good clean threads, get a good solid lock up here. We're gonna be crushing the brake onto that crush washer against this nut right here. Another point here on the sub, make sure that your sight is tight on there. So definitely worth checking before we get in there. You wanna make sure this nut is tight. If you didn't mess with it, it should be just fine, but something I like to point out ahead of time just in case. So you'll see right here, you know, this is where we're gonna be actually clamping down on the barrel. We can't clamp down on this plastic handguard because it's plastic. And then the barrel mates into a plastic housing, that hinge. So there's really not a good spot to get a good bite on the sub, except right here. So this is pertaining to the sub 2000 only. And this is a special case because, well, there's a lot of plastic on the sub. So you've got to have something to bite down on that barrel. Now you could try to just rig it up yourself with, you know, some towels in your vise, but it may not give you the clamping power you need. So, you know, we've got these sub 2000 barrel jaws now, which are great. You know, we custom machine these to fit this sub 2000 right here in this little tiny access point. And you've got magnets on the back as well. So it'll seat up to the jaws and hang in there just perfect, allowing you to obviously get it just right before you clamp it down. You're not gonna have to hold them in place. So there's an inside look of the jaws right there. You know, these have already been used a little bit and this will happen. You're gonna get a little wear pattern. Naturally, they're soft aluminum. So it's definitely something that is obviously intended to wear. It's a tool. It's gonna be clamping, giving you that clamping force, that good bite. You know, the idea is to obviously sacrifice something here instead of sacrificing our firearm, which would be the worst case. We don't wanna do that. So when you look at these barrel jaws and the way they're cut, you know, you got a V cut, both sides, they're exactly the same. You got a deeper channel on one side, you can see that here, and then a channel that's a little bit 
less deep, a little more shallow. So it's to fit the contour of this barrel. So you'll notice up here near the front sight, it's thicker. And down here near the handguard, it's a lot thinner. So when we put it on, we're gonna do just that. The deeper portion of the jaw is gonna locate, obviously on the thicker side, in that shallower portion of the jaw on the thinner side. Deeper right here, going with the thicker part of the barrel, shallower going with the thinner part. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this with masking tape as well, just to protect our barrel, the finish. You know, hopefully you're only gonna ever have to really do this one time, but you know, it's a great tool as well if you're gonna take your muzzle brake off and put a can on there, suppressor, you know, you got options. So you got a good safe way to do that over and over again. So we'll go ahead and we'll wrap this up with some masking tape, get our jaw set, and then get started. You don't need a whole lot of masking tape. You just need enough to get, you know, one or two wraps of coverage. All right, that's plenty. Get it on there decent. And then what we'll do is we're gonna flip around here, get set up. So I know my deeper portion is going towards the front sight. And I'm gonna set it up here, barrel pointing this way. So I got them position the deeper channels forward here. All right guys, so we got the vice block set up here. So pretty simple and straightforward. You know, we're just gonna get one situated right over here and we'll make sure we get the other one lined up as we tighten the vise on it. You just basically wanna make sure you've got it centered between the sight and the handguard, which, you know, it's pretty easy to do. You just eyeball it there. You know, we already talked about where to position the vice blocks. So once you got them right where you want it, now keep in mind, you know, the firearms at a 45 does not matter. The 45 degree angle is perfectly fine. We just wanna get a nice solid bite here on the barrel so that we don't screw up the firearm. So once you kind of get it snug and you're happy with it, we're right at a 45, perfectly fine, and then we can tighten it down. You're gonna tighten the crap out of it. We wanna make sure we get that good solid bite. Oh yeah. That baby's solid. Now look at all that flex there on the handguard. So that's what you wouldn't want. So if you were to tighten up on that handguard, potentially risk just basically destroying the firearm. I mean, that's not gonna be any sort of solid. That's just not good. So we're not doing that, thankfully. We're clamping here on the barrel, which is the right way to do it. And then we're gonna put our crush washer on and tighten right up against it, and away we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll take our muzzle brake and our crush washer and you'll notice the flat back here on the muzzle brake. So this design and all the designs going forward, just gonna stick with a flat back. That way we can use a crush washer. Crush washers are very commonplace in the industry and most people already know how to do this. So this probably isn't anything that's completely new to you. You know, it's simple. You just throw your crush washer on your muzzle brake and you're done. So you know, definitely chucking up this Sub 2000 and the vice is certainly new and this is something that I'm glad we put a tool together to do this. It's required, otherwise it'd be a really painful task. So with the crush washer, this crown right here, you'll notice there's a crown portion, kind of pointed end up top here. And then underneath, there's that kind of concaved end in there. So the pointed end is what's gonna go straight on the barrel, all right? So that pointed end is right here against this nut on that front sight. And this flat back right here is what's gonna rotate and crush against that concave end. Now, just for a little extra insurance, I'm gonna throw a couple little dabs of rock set on there. I mean, we've already got it. If you got it, use it. If you want it, go ahead and grab it. You know, we got it there on the website separately. Just gotta dig around for it, but not 100% necessary with the crush washer. I mean, we are gonna have this thing on there super tight. So then just get your thread started, you know, hand tight, and you could end up anywhere. You know, depending on how the threads are cut, production dates, this and that, I mean, it's not all gonna line up exactly the same. Every sub, you're gonna hand tighten it and it could be anywhere. Now, with that being said, you know, if you hand tighten it and it's perfectly timed, you can still go 360 degrees of tightness. You can go 400 degrees. With the crush washer, you can actually crush it, time it, and then take it off and use it again. Or say you crush it, time it, and you overshoot it, you can just take it off and restart. So that's another thing with the crush washer, it's a little more forgiving, which we like, and you know, kind of the same principles apply. It's still reusable. You know, the jam nut, the previous edition, it was reusable, so you could take it on and off. Same kind of concept, but if you want, you can always get a few spare jam nuts. It definitely doesn't hurt to have that. Next, we're gonna take the masking tape, once again, cover our muzzle brake, you know, we're gonna get four good wraps. Just take that baby around four times. So 
So four wraps because the 13 16 wrench will work perfectly. It'll fit, press it all down good, but it's gonna be a nice, perfect snug fit. And that's how we designed it. So we took that into account, the thickness of the brake plus four wraps of tape, what wrench will work, 13 16 And then we'll go ahead and we'll tighten it up. But you can also use an adjustable wrench as well. So that option is certainly there. So 13 16 we're gonna go ahead and get a full 360 here. Now, once it starts getting a little snug, so I started tightening it up, I got about a quarter of a half turn there, I can feel it getting a little snug. It's starting to crush. And when it starts to crush, you wanna back it off a little bit. You're releasing that tension, and then you continue to crush it. All right, so you start feeling that, kind of that binding effect, and you're gonna back it off. Other thing is too, as you're getting close, and I'm getting close here, it's kind of hard to tell where you're at. So if you just want to pop a hole in that tape there to see obviously where that vertical cut is, because we're trying to time it perfect, 12 o'clock here with the front sight post. So nearly there, it's just a matter of getting it just a smidge here. And like I said, if you overshoot it, you can certainly do it again. I'm kind of just getting down by it and taking a good look at it, making sure I'm level, eyeballing it, and that looks level. All right, so simple as that. Now it's just a matter of removing this tape, seeing how we did, you know, and if we're not quite timed, we'll just do it again. All right, guys, at this point, we got it timed, we're good to go, so all we have to do is remove the masking tape, which might take a minute or two. You know, use a razor blade or a knife, just kind of go about it delicately, but at least we protected our brake in the process, you know, nothing worse than marring it up real bad. And, you know, if you get anything that looks like a little mark, I would clean it first because it may just be the tape residue on there. All right, so there we go. Throw a little CLP on there just to clean it up, make sure I didn't mar it up. I mean, yeah, the tape can be a little inconvenient, but much easier to protect that finish, you know, than just going on it with a wrench. I mean, unless it doesn't bother you, man, then all, you know, by all means. I mean, chicks dig scars. I just like to have a story to go with it. So there you go. I mean, she's timed perfect. And you might think, oh, that can't be tight. I mean, you can try to <laughs> loosen it up, but it is on there rock solid. You're gonna cut your hand on that brake. So that's the nice thing about the new Crush washer is that it's industry standard, very simple, straightforward. It's just with the Sub 2000, you gotta have these jaws. You know, that was the nice thing about the way we did it before with the jam nut. You didn't have to have a vise. You didn't have to have the jaws. And I'm fully expecting to hear some mixed feedback. Some guys may be like, man, you know, I like the old way because I didn't need a vise. I didn't need the jaws. But I'm telling you, you're going to have to get a vise one of these days. It's worth it. For the 30, 40 bucks you might spend on a vise, you're going to use it for a lifetime. You know, everybody comment in this video if you got a vise or not. I'm actually curious. So if you got a vise, well, let me know. Leave in the comments below because I'm still kind of curious who's got a vice, who doesn't. I've heard some crazy stories about guys using all kinds of stuff, you know, to do things, but I'm really curious about the vice. This is definitely the way to go. So we're all done here. Simple process when you got the right tools, you know, and that's kind of the direction we're really advocating here. So you can see these vice blocks work great. I mean, they really kind of mesh in there and they hold it nice and tight. So. Little vice blocks there. So now just a matter of removing that tape from the barrel. It's gonna take a second. Obviously it's crushed right into it there. All right, so, so there it is, remove the tape. Anything you can do to protect that finish is always a good idea. You know, we don't wanna scratch it up unless we got a good you know, story to go with it. All safe and sound. Now we can go ahead and throw a few rounds through it, see how she does, but man, definitely a must to have some kind of muzzle brake on your sub. Really love this design. This one has been very popular and a lot of guys love it. We are very stoked about it. We just made a slight improvement. So you'll see us improving our stuff as we go too. We get feedback, especially the installation feedback guys saying, hey, this could be better, that could be better. This one is gonna require a vise. So that is something new, kind of taking it up a notch. If you don't have a vise, man, I'd highly encourage getting a vise. They're like anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks, Harbor Freight. So not a huge investment, especially if you're gonna be working on guns, especially if you own more than one gun, you're likely gonna have to do this again sometime in your life. All right, let's go shoot some rounds. All right, guys, so we just installed the muzzle brake on our Sub 2000, so we'll run a couple rounds through it. Just let you see how it works. See if it does anything better, 
It will be a little difficult to gauge, but it does quite a bit in terms of helping it shoot flatter and obviously reducing some of that felt recoil. So certainly an improvement and you got a threaded barrel, you got to put something on there. Ooh. Yeah. So nice and flat, really love the way it shoots. Perfect little hole there in the trap, but doesn't say much I'm shooting like four feet away, but stability is key for accuracy. Helps reduce some of that barrel jump, muzzle rise, keeps you flat. Perfect, man. Highly recommend it. Thank you, Car Brother, as always. You guys are great, man. You know, a lot of good feedback. Even our older parts, you know, we're always going back and making things better, so we never stop. Constant wheel of innovation. Really appreciate it. Thank you, and as always, happy shooting. <laughs>